What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here, and today whew, we're talking about sound effects, audio, and how editing them together will make your films and your YouTube videos and just basically everything so much better. I'm gonna start by saying this, sound is so important. Audio is so important. We process audio before we process video. That's actually how it works. It's funny if you think about it, because we can watch a low res video on YouTube, on the internet, somewhere, and you can get through it. You can watch a video that's slightly out of focus, maybe a little bit fuzzy, maybe some shaky cam, and you can, for the most part, get through it. But if you try to listen to something, or watch a video that has bad audio, or it's crackling, or it's muffled, or there's lots of audio pops and mistakes, and you can't get through it. You turn it off. You're like, no, nah, I can't even, I can't hear this. Just forget it. Just turn it off. I don't want, nope. Nope. It's so hard to get through something that sounds terrible, where the audio is just too much wind. <laughs> I can't deal with that. It's so hard to get through these things. And why is that? It's because audio is so important. It plays a huge role in telling that story. It plays a huge role in like adding that extra to your footage to just round it out and make it whole and make it just as best as it can be. So today, we're gonna look at some techniques, how to apply sound effects, how to make sound effects, how to record your own sound effects, how to kind of tweak sound design in a small little edit to kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea as to how powerful it is and how much it adds to like an overall piece when you're shooting video and shooting anything video related. This can always help. And it's funny too, because audio, it's, it's not the most exciting thing. It's not like you don't wake up and go like, oh, I got a new lav mic today, so excited. It's exciting getting new gear, but I'll be honest, if it's audio gear, I'm kind of like, eh, it's because I have to. I guess I'll buy it. I guess I'll buy the mics. I guess I'll upgrade my Rode mics. It's never as exciting as like, oh, new lens today. Oh. Never that kind of a level for me. Maybe it's because I'm not an audio engineer and it's something that I just kind of maybe struggle with even myself self-admitted, it's never been as exciting as getting a new camera or something else like that. So, and because it's so easily overlooked, this is why it's so important because chances are if I'm overlooking it and dismissing it and not excited about it, there's other people out there who feel the same as me who are doing the same thing. This video is hopefully gonna open your eyes a little bit to that and you'll walk away with some new skills that you can apply today. Okay, so I'm gonna roll an edit in a second here and it's important to say that this is essentially an example of how you can use audio and sound design to enrich enrich your edit. And then we're gonna go into where I got these sounds, how I got them, how I use them in Premiere Pro, how you can get them and use them as well. We'll hop into the computer and take a look a little more in depth as to how this works and some other films that I've used it on and some examples like that. So with that being said, it is time for some B-roll. Okay, so there you have it. Most of the sounds in that edit that you saw are completely fake. I shot a lot of that at 120 frames a second, which doesn't record audio, so I actually have to build the atmosphere myself. So city ambience, sirens, police sirens, that kind of thing, people walking, horns, cars, just air, like an atmospheric kind of air sound to feel like you're outdoors. I put sound effects in when the skateboard lands or fake waterfalls and birds and air moving through trees and trees themselves. So when you mix all of these things together, basically created, you've designed like an environment, an audio rich environment that accompanies the music that all works together to make your film better, to tell a better story. Now what's nice about this is you can get really creative when it comes to sound design. You don't have to use specific sounds that are meant like, example, my friend, Ollie's off this stair set and lands, but it's in 120 frames a second, so I don't have any audio of him landing, but I want a nice good impact of that skateboard hitting the ground. 
I might search all these different sites for skateboard sounds or try to find it myself. I might, I might come up short, I might not get it. So that's when it's fun to be creative and find other sounds that you can actually use to replicate that or even make it more impactful. So the sound of my friend Jesse actually hitting the ground with a skateboard when he lands from doing that set is actually a sound of jail doors being slammed shut and it sounds like this. So then I overlaid that sound with him landing his skateboard and then you get this. But then you throw the music on top of it with a couple ambient sounds of outside city life and some sirens and you get this. So you can see how we took, we took something that has nothing to do with skateboarding or what actually was filmed yesterday and we made it work for us. That's an example of how you can just be creative with noises and pick different things that are completely unrelated to the shot that still work and help round it out. That's what I love so much about doing sound design for my edits because it's, it's almost now at this point, just as much fun as editing the footage itself. I'll probably spend more time editing the sound in an edit like Alpine Views or what you just saw than I'll actually spend editing the footage that I shot for that. Now, where do I get my sound? I've told you guys before, I use a website called epidemicsound.com. The link's below, it's in the description, it's right on the top line so you can just click it. Not only do they offer music for your YouTube subscription, if you haven't seen the video that I'm referring to, I'll annotate it here, but not only do they offer subscriptions and you can find thousands and thousands of songs that are all okay to use for YouTube videos where you're not gonna get flagged or anything like that, but they have a huge library of sound effects. So I probably pull from their sound effect library just as much or more than their actual music tracks. I sift through all the sounds so much on a daily basis to try to find the right thing. Every sound that you heard from this mix came from Epidemic Sound. Every sound that you heard from that Alpine Views video came from Epidemic Sound. All you gotta do is go up to the window, search in what you're looking for, police siren, hit enter. You're gonna see the results come up. You scroll, you listen, you preview, you download it. I download a ton. I've got hundreds saved into a folder. And now I just pull from those. So if I'm doing an edit tomorrow, let's say, and I shoot some stuff, chances are I have my swoosh sounds. I have my police sirens. I have my forest, my beach, walking, running, just different basic sound effects that I've kind of used from Epidemic Sound to create my own local library on my computer so I can reference it anytime. So Epidemic Sound is great for that. They're not paying me to say this. They didn't they didn't even sponsor this video. I'm just a huge fan of their platform. They have great people working there. So the link is below, you can sign up. I highly recommend that you do it, give it a trial, whatever. It's really, really cost effective for what you're getting back, okay? So not only are you getting the whole music library, you're getting the whole sound effect library. That is a huge, huge resource for me when it comes to editing sound and sound design. Now, if you don't want to download sound effects and you're like, I just, I want to create my own, you can do that. You can just go out and record the sound separately. Sometimes, depending where I am, if I'm walking through the forest, if I'm somewhere where I notice the audio is really, really good, if I'm in a restaurant, if I'm downtown, it doesn't matter, wherever you are, you can just hit record and let it roll a little bit of the ambient sound wherever you are or the room tone of a restaurant that you're in so that you can use it later. Just like we talked about for B-roll in stockpiling that footage so that maybe down the line, you might have something to use if, if you're struggling with an edit and you're like, oh, I have a motorcycle clip of this guy ripping down the street that I never used. The same thing applies for audio. So if I'm at a baseball game and you wanna hear the bats cracking, you can record a bit of audio. Even on your cell phone, you can just pull it out, record a little bit of that room tone. Something is better than nothing. Now for this, specifically, if you wanna get a little more high tech and a little more advanced, you can buy something called an H4N field recorder. Now these field recorders are, are awesome. You can do a whole lot of stuff with them. You can plug two different lav mics into them. You can record audio through it. You can record audio with it. Very versatile thing to have as a filmmaker. So I bring it with me in case I ever need to run an interview with two mics. But at the same time, I bring it with me to record room tone and record the environment around me. So yesterday we were hiking through these waterfalls. I took it out. I put my little wind sock on it, a dead cat. I think this one's called the Chewbacca. And then I just walked around and recorded audio of the stream. I recorded audio of these waterfalls. I recorded audio of the forest and just the ambient atmosphere that I was in. So I had true sounds from the footage itself that was way higher quality than what my mic would have picked up from the camera. Another interesting way to play with sound and sound design is to match the audio to the camera movement. Okay, so for example, the spin transition. If it had just been the spin transition like this, it, it looks cool, but there's just, it's missing something. You would know, you would watch that edit through and be like, oh, that was cool. But because I put that swoosh in there, 
don't have to do my own sound effects. But because I put that in there, it just completely changes it. Now listen, that looks and sounds way more complete. So matching your sound to what's happening on screen is a big win. Same thing with when he ollies off that stair set, I drop the music, have the siren in the background, and I put a sound effect of like bullet time or slow motion. This is what the sound effect sounds like. So I threw that over top of the footage to kind of accentuate the fact that everything has just slowed down. You can visually see that it's slowed down, but because I've given you that audio now to also listen to, it just enhances, it just rounds the thing out, it just makes it more rich, it makes it worth rewinding and watching again versus just nothing. So matching sound effects to screen actions, be it that it's something that amplifies that screen action or makes it more impactful, you can look through your footage and say, okay, what do I have here that I can use to really amplify with some sound effects? What can I use sound-wise that's gonna really make this footage stand out and look a lot better just based off the fact that I've enriched it with sound. And when you're doing interviews or something that's not as exciting as building sound around a really fun edit with great footage and you're just doing some talking head stuff, it's still just as important to get room tone and to get good clean audio because if you didn't have good audio, like I said, we process that first. Example, this mic that I have like right in front of my face here was pointed a little bit to the right. I'll move it right now. If my mic was pointed that way for the whole explanation, you can still hear it, but it doesn't sound nearly as good as when it's pointed right at me. So you can see how just the smallest detail when it comes to audio can ruin an entire experience of a video or a film. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on audio and sound design and sound effects. I had a blast making it because it's something that I'm passionate about. It's a really fun topic, and it's also a really, really important topic. So check out that site. I hope you guys got some insight. I hope you're inspired to get out there and shoot your footage, but record your audio with just as much passion as you are for the video aspect, because it's just gonna pay off in the end. So enough of that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, give me some thumbs up. Love, smash it if you so desire. <laughs> Subscribe if you aren't already. I put up videos as often and as frequently as possible. Hit the bell if you wanna be notified each time I upload. Thank you again very much and, and, I'll see you in the next video.